and you being up and around, it's good for you. It's good for your body. You keep using it. Yeah, I recently uh, stumbled across this quote that says, uh, your health is your wealth. Hey, hey, there it's true. Hey, there it's true. Since I read that, I've really been really trying to take care of myself. Eat good food, wholesome food, man. That's I'm telling you, that's that was my whole thing about my kids. I had to make sure that they had good, wholesome food because I think that's part of why we see so many sick kids nowadays. Asthma, allergies, da 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 da. Kids, you know, really, all sorts of problems. They can't eat peanut butter. What the fuck? Man. Never heard of that shit when I was a kid. That's my dream car right here. The Chrysler 300, that black car. Oh, you. Oh I wouldn't ever own an internal combustion engine car ever. I, I, I've been boycotting them for. This is my first car I've ever owned, man. I mean, really? my first new car I've ever owned. That's first like new you bought, that I bought. Not. First new car I ever wow. ever bought. Uh, I'm six, at 68 years old. This is just one month old. Uh, my previous car. It's been 20 years since I've owned a, 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 a previous car, and that was a, a Mercedes diesel that I could burn biodiesel in. I didn't have to, uh, because I, I, I think burning petroleum at this point in our in our societal evolution is evil. It's wrong. It, it's stealing from great our great-grandchildren. And I think stealing from our kids is, stealing from your kids is like the worst thing you can fucking do. I mean, you're stealing from your kids? Are you kidding me? It's supposed to go the other way around. <laughs> I never look at it like that. But I, I know they don't want you to look at it that way. Because why? Because the oil barons are in control. They hold, they control the media, and they want you as customers, and they want you to keep on buying their shit. And that's why you hear so much anti-EV stuff. Why they're so down on Musk. It's because of it's what I call capital inertia. They've already got all that money invested. They're making that much money, and so they can control the. Money does make the world go round. Yeah, but so, and, and 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 that's what we all have to realize. And if we want the world to change, we got to watch where we're putting our dollars. And every dollar you put into petroleum is feeding the oil barons who are trying to control us. That's why I bought an EV. I'm pretty convinced. You're a young man. Think about it. I wrote the first. I stopped eating meat because I read a book called uh, "Diet for a Small Planet." In two miles, turn left on Red Oak Drive. This is a book that was written in the '70s, which is ancient now, right? Yeah. "Diet for a Small Planet" it talks about the fact that it, for every pound of meat that you get, you have to, they fed that animal eight pounds of vegetable protein that you could have eaten. Oh, damn. So that's a waste of food. And on top of that, the way they do it, it's toxic because it, it, when you put all those animals together, they got to feed them with all sorts of antibiotics and then all that shit and piss and blood and everything all comes out in the same place, polluting the place instead of being spread out all over the land and making fertilizer, it becomes pollution. It's just, if you're going to eat meat, I, 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 like I said, I'm an I'm a, a ecological environmental uh, a, a, plant-based. I, I, I'm not an ethical. If I, I'm not, I recognize that animals get eaten, man. Yeah. You know, it's part of nature. If you're going to eat animals, you either should be hunting it yourself, or, you know, or know somebody that's yeah, hunting it. At least know where it's coming from. Or know where it's coming from. And out in this part of the world, you can know where it's coming from. You can know the farmer. You can know the butcher. You can know that. You're going to pay more. That's the, pro that's the yeah, truth. That's the truth. That's the, that's the fuck up right here. You're um, going to pay more. Now, now, the only power you got is with your money. Now, you want to know more, you want to be healthier, then you're going to pay more. You want cheap, you want to be sick, you can go to McDonald's. Uh, that is true. That's why it's fast food. Because they're chopping, you realize they're chopping down the fucking Amazon so that they can raise more cattle so you can have fast, cheap food? Uh, I ain't checked that out. Cattle raising is, is the biggest uh, contributor to deforestation in the rainforest. Raising cattle. And I 
And that's another thing they don't want you to know, because then you might not feel so good about eating that shit. I worked for 20 years in advertising, so I, I, I got a good feeling for how, the, how this type of stuff gets manipulated. Well, I hope you enjoyed your ride and your little brain twisting I did for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful world, man. And there's a whole bunch to, you know, that we each have a responsibility for if we want to step up for it. Drop off Justin. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. Alright, so how would you compare nowadays we to turn what left on Red Oak Drive, then turn left on Ben's Church? Oh, there's no doubt about it. That there's weed available nowadays. When I first started smoking weed, Sensomia did not exist. Damn. What? Yeah. Whoa. Everything had seeds. Whoa. Everything had seeds. Dang. Wasn't until the 80s that uh, that Mexican farmers started realizing that yeah, they, that was a Mexican brickweed, right? Well, before that was always Mexican brickweed, but then then they started coming up with the sensimia with the uh, and that came in egg boxes rather than bricks. Wow. And it, it was more loosely packed so that they, so that the buds would be pre preserved a little bit more. And uh, and they still had seeds, but not nowhere near like you know. And that was that was the start. And I was, I was that's when I was um, I was in it pretty pretty good. Then I was selling hundreds of pounds. Uh, I was part of a, a trip that was uh, bringing uh, herb up from Mexico. Yeah, I plugged in until they put me in prison. Damn. Eight year sentence, five years in, and three years uh, special parole. Though I only uh, served uh, ten months actually in because of uh, um, a bunch of legal mumble jumbo that got me out a little early. But yeah, eight year sentence. For eight years, I was pissing in a bottle. Still smoking pot though. I convinced the guy that was assigned to taking my piss test that he didn't want to put me away. I'm a nice guy. I was a single parent at the time with three kids. My ex had gone over the wire. I said, you, you can put me away. I smoke pot. You can put me away. You have that power. But you're going to put my kids in foster care. You're going to cost the government a whole bunch of fucking money. And you know I'm a good guy. So, but it's up to you because I'm not going to stop smoking pot. He said, well, do you do cocaine? I said, no, I don't have any problem with cocaine. I don't do cocaine. He says, well, I'm going to be testing you for cocaine for the rest of your life. Yeah. Damn. That is what's up. So for seven years, Damn. I did piss tests for cocaine. <laughs> though I never, ever had any offense with the cocaine. Damn, never even touched the book of sugar. Right. So <laughs> I, I, mean, I had, wow. but, you know. Uh, okay. uh, that, that's not what they were tracking you with. Wow. Now that's... That's the universe working in your favor. Yeah. <laughs> I ended up getting this drug counselor, MDMA, because he had heard about it was good for psychology, for psychology and, and he couldn't get any anywhere. And I had all sorts of fucking connections. So I, I was copping, copping psychedelics from my drug counselor. And he was piss testing me for cocaine. And he, he was honest. He told me, you, t you come dirty for cocaine and I will send you away. I understand and I said, "That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. I can pay, but I can play by those rules. You give me those rules, I will play by those rules." And that's what we did for seven years. Wow. See, I sell, I sell pot here and there, but I'm no kingpin. Like, I'm not going to pick up pounds. I move zips, little ounces here and there. So it's like. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm, I'm watching the weed change, but like in the past couple of months, like I 
really see like an increase in the quality of people. Well, that's because things are going legal and the competition is getting hard. That's why I was asking. So how is how I wish you could pair the weed from back then. Well, like I said, back then when I started, it was seeds. You know, there wasn't any. So, yeah, the, I mean, and now, I mean, there's things about the market right now that I really don't like. Um, what you mean? Well, like the Delta H shit and, and, okay. and, and, and all that kind of stuff that to try and get around the legality stuff. Uh, I, I, I don't trust a lot of edibles. Um, uh, the vape stuff, I don't trust at all. For one, you you got all you you you're tying all this plastic and shit, uh, and pa you know, and and, and and electronic garbage. Coating your lungs in that shit. And you and, and with and with this stuff and and propylene glycol, really? That's antifreeze. You're fucking breathing antifreeze to make big blue bubbles of smoke or all that kind of stuff. I have trouble with. In that sense, I drink, I smoke flour. Now, I, I, now rosins and, and you know, and dabs and stuff like I can understand how they how they got some value. So you're fine with the extracts, especially the cold pressed. Oh you know, my goodness! I can see that. That's that's you know, you're, you're you're smoking sap. That's cool. I got a homeboy that showed me how to make bubble uh bubble ash, and it's like the process. I wouldn't say it's hard. But it's very delicate. You feel me? I have problems with anything that uses petroleum distillates like butane, natural mm -hmm. shit. Because again, those are precious resources that you're using. You know, but yeah. it, but it extracts better. Yeah, great. But it also makes better plastic. You know, it's you're you're wasting. You know, you're stealing from the grandkids again. To use it as an extract, there's other extracts you can use. I, so I have trouble with that kind of stuff. Quarter mile turn left on so I'm, road. you know, I'm an OG purist, man. I, you, you ever, you know, you ever hear the name Jack Herer? I have not. I just Jack Herer. Jack Herer. He wrote the book called Emperor Wears No Clothes. There's, a, there's actually a pot called Jack Herer. Oh, wow. Is it any good? Turn left yeah. on Ren Road <laughs> and turn right. It's a sativa blend. Uh, I'm going I, in I, here. I, yes, sir. You're gonna make this first right. I like hybrid. It's a, it's a shame that more people don't know uh, Jack because Jack is one of the people that is responsible for marijuana being legal. Wow. Totally responsible for marijuana. Drop being legal. off Justin. He's the one that started the hemp movement. Oh. H E R E R. Alright. Take it easy, buddy. You too, man. Good, a, a good feed in your brain. <laughs> <laughs> Same to you, bye. What am I doing now? I'm where the fuck am I?